I mean, uh, I mean, uh, start, start, starting your intro with uh is also kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're just a. Uh, it's the it's the meta. You're doing the the anti joke, or whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll say that. So, prepare uh, for I don't know, I, I think OD is a really good last pick here. It kind of solves some of the problems that they have. I think the panel was spot on with the timber being a really big issue. So now they at least have some solution. Um, but I, I still do worry that GPK on Lina is really strong and this lane matchup is good. He is going to come off to a good start. So I, I would really, if I'm secret here, I'm looking to Yapsor to really dictate the game. You need to hit arrows by setting them with Astral primarily. Uh, get ganks in that mid lane, maybe some smoke movements. Um, and make sure Zai gets to play here. I feel like his axe in game one did not really get to show up much. So this time around, they better ensure that, that Zai gets to shine a bit. Uh, I would say his lane match was okay. The void matchup is good, but Undying can be kind of iffy as Slardar. Um, and Mirana is not exactly the best hero at dealing with that Undying. Relatively bad base damage uh, compared to, say, something like a 4 Lina, which fares way better against the Undying. Um, so we'll see. Isn't there a cartoon character that's like a really big baby or something? No. Dude, look at look at that look at that Slardar face though. It, it's kind of a big baby, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. I think you're uh, I think you're focusing on it way too much. I think that's the problem. Right, double the K to start. Uh I don't want to put percentages on it, but absolutely Lena favored, no doubt about it. Um I'd be I'd be surprised if GPK doesn't come out with a pretty big lead. Nisha will have to buy salves if Lena plays aggressively. Just the range advantage, and especially in the start, OD kind of relies on Astral to secure last hits on range creeps, and Lina can just stun you every time. Oh. Should take advantage of that. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mention babies there. I think Void should out farm strictly because of how good a lane this is for Undying. So he's gonna bully the, the Slardar when Slardar is half healthy and needs to start playing defensively against Soul Rift. It's not available just yet. They might actually try to go for him here. Still only level 1 though, so not gonna happen. But they bully him away and get denies. Um, Yapsor, probably gonna expend the first arrows, securing range creeps or getting big creeps in the jungle, but that's gonna get sentried off, so not a possibility. No option there. I think taking some damage. They still don't have Soul Rip. Dyer's courier has been killed. Mega easy lane for Timber. It's so easy when he hits level three. Uh, he's needed right in the start. As soon as Timber is 3, he can leave, I think. Um, DM with two levels in reactive armor and one in chain should be more or less invincible down here. You take... It's a strictly physical damage lane. Nature's Prophet and Lone Druid have no other damage until level 6 on the Nature's Prophet, so... Uh, I mean, that's a little bit on Entangling Claws, but it's, it's it's negligible, so DM can just sit here and enjoy it. Uh, so Save's job is basically done. He's free to leave if he wants. I think he's going to stick around for level 2. And then I would love to see him really double down on destroying Nisha. I think that's the best play on the map right now. Help that Lina make Odie really uncomfortable. Um, you have a possibility to rotate top as well. I don't think that's as impactful. We'll see. Yep. 
sometimes you can... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sometimes immortal heroes can die to their own uh, weak mentality. So, sometimes you gotta hit them there. That mental damage should never be underestimated in Dota. Dyer's structures are fortified. Good Astral. Radiant's you will get... Middle tower is under attack. He's still dead. Oh, no, not enough mana. Oh, he got it now. Yeah, GPK needed just a little bit of mana there. That's why the kill was so slow. He was like three mana short from a Dragon Slave. Gets it in the end, gets the kill, and now gets a DD rune. So even worse news for Nisha. When he comes back in lane, he will now be facing a double damage Lina getting level six before him. That is super scary. Again, have to keep in mind how free Tiny is. This is the dream scenario for this hero when you get to move as you want. Like a lot of the times in this patch, the four is kind of anchored in the off lane because this is a very safe lane favorite patch with the the very cheap regen items they can buy with the armor or from the tower with the regen from the tower. Uh, usually safe laners just flat out win their lane, but this is so easy for Timber that, hey, your tiny can do whatever he wants. And that's obviously what they were looking for in the draft when they picked that hero. So honestly, just great drafting from VP in that in that aspect, but they, they managed to free up their force so early. Just look at mid, man. He's just... Nisha's hitting jungle on OD minute five. It's... It's it's not great. Oh, arrow. He's still running. Is that two for two? Three on him. Three for four. Okay. Not bad. One of the strengths of Nature's Prophet coming into play there. Puppy teleporting to get the secondary rune bot. Lena got a crack level six now. Um, anybody coming mid should be wary now. He's bottom Radiant net worth in his team. Scanning. Nisha is number five in his team. He's less net worth than the Fury. Oh, he just got a ward sent to him. Maybe that's a, an omen for his future role in the game. Uh. <laughs> Puppy's like, Nisha, you failed me. I will carry now. <laughs> uh, I, it, it's tough. Like, jungling OD is obviously super inefficient compared to splitting between lane and jungle creeps. Um, but it's one of those things that the top Radiant's teams, such as Secret, are really good at, is identifying what's the lesser evil. I think standing mid as OD is even worse, because you have no hero that can protect it. Nature's Prophet's not going to stop this gank, nor is the Marana, so you can't really prevent this from happening. So this way you get the maximum gold out of it, because you have one hero in the jungle and a guy in the lane that's way less valuable. Oh, and he should just walked in. He could just get comboed now, though. Let's toss back. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Okay. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. Yeah. He can keep the Siege Creep alive until Matsu has to go and hit it now. Uh, obviously, the tower is never going to get this job done against Timber, but Matsu doing the right thing here with his hero being there, taking care of the siege. Um, so yeah, I mean, as far as the gold looks, it looks even, right? Secret have the same net worth roughly as VP, but... Honestly, kind of a very uncharacteristic blunder from VP. I, I just don't think they have the damage for that. I think in the dream scenario where Void bashes every hit, that might still not have been a kill. They, th this chrono is not intimidating when all you have outside of it is a tiny avalanche and a little level 1 soul room. Uh, I didn't notice. I think he might have time walked in to cast it, but it was like around the same time, so the cooldown's way too long. Uh, toss into LSA. Radiant's 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. No, it's, this should amount to some pretty good damage. He might get almost half of it here at this rate if nobody TPs. Timber obviously able to... Actually, never mind. He TP top. He has cooldown. So he can't go and defend it either. So, yeah, it's about... It's almost half. Got like 40% off that one from that push. Nisha on OD. Not bad. Yeah. And I, I we're painting this picture that Secret is getting owned, and it was while the gold was even. It's it's not really because of the net worth discrepancy, it's because of how it's distributed, right? It's that this OD will now again die mid. Let's, uh, oh, stick. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Oh. Radiance middle tower has fallen. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the first time in the game that VP now has a gold lead. It's not major, but um, once again, have to keep an eye on this OD. How does this hero recover? We were talking about it a lot, but it really is the story of this game. You pick OD with Lone Druid, and Radiant's OD's having a bad time. Top. Your Lone Druid has a lot of responsibility right now. Whereas on the other side, your, your hero is scale incredibly. Void OD going into late game? Hell yeah. Or sorry, not Void OD, Void Lina is, is terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. Um, definitely play. plenty of scaling potential for both teams, but Radiant's it's just that this key hero for secret attack. scaling is so far behind means that they hit that timing so much later. You gotta find some way of getting that back up. Yo, Slaughter is really far up in the air. Into the Black sea. Did you down down on her? We got that on camera. He was literally... I don't know, he was a thousand range up into the air. When I, I had to move the mouse so much that he covered almost my whole screen when I got him on camera. Oh, save. Should live here, maybe? Thank you. There's no calling blade. He's dead. Oh, GPK running into trance. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yes! Face the darkness. <laughs> They're definitely, uh, I think given the circumstances, secrets, uh, especially Zion and Yaps, are doing a really good job at setting up the kills that are presented to them. Uh, Smart are very, very good against Void in this stage of the game. Just the wrong move speed from the maxed out sprint. Uh, built that Zayas gone this game. He's gone 4 1 2. Not too often we see that, I think. Still mainly Bash that gets maxed in most games. But just favoring that incredible mobility so that he can get bashes, setting up arrows, and finding kills. And that is making space for Nisha, who is now. He's 40 gold ahead of his 4, so not bottom anymore. Um, is climbing. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah. And it is true, even even without items, he's uh, on the OD, he is still killable, right? Like, Slargar with the Corrosive Haze can negate some of that armor, and then you have the Marana arrow for five seconds and to hit the whole time. So he, he is still killable, it's not like he's a god who can just stand between bottom tier 2 and 3. But still has to be feeling relatively safe that, unless they rotate at least three heroes, I don't think any two of Secret can actually kill him. Uh, and that's a lot of freedom to have on the map to just really maximize here. You see his CS approaching the 100 mark. Top CSer in the game. Looking pretty good for him. Yep. And... Yeah, it's good. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, they should know where Epikid is going here. He just farmed mid and crossed to the bottom right, so they're expecting to find him here on the Ancients, and that's a good read. Oh, he pinks it out. 
There's that sentry ward. Really good value. And now Zai is stealing it, so now Zai could get caught. Oh, just on the edge. He's not dead. Not sure what to make of this hammer. I don't know how much I like it. It's like secret are identifying that fighting and team fighting in this game is extremely hard, so they're probably gonna just try to split push and push out waves, damage towers. So for that, it's cool. Um, I guess there's some setup with Astral into Hammer or whatever, but Nature's Prophet doesn't really have a natural setup for himself, right, compared to other heroes. Sprout is not a setup for Hammer if the other heroes have any mobility for Steph. That LSA. Quelling Blades. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Debating what other item he could have bought, because it, it looks kind of weird. I'm not saying it's bad, because Meteor Hammer will always find some use in the game. Uh, I, did, I don't know if their lineup wants to hit a timing earlier than that, potentially. Even with a weak OD, that they could maybe get something like auras, so they could be strong in fights. When you have this much gold on the fire, you obviously have the luxury of really getting a team item that benefits your, like, say, Vlad's pipe, Crimson, whatever you want. Solar Crest. Free rush, though. Really big. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Um, I mean, the, the logic here is that Nisha is likely to be the primary target of VP because he has the save and the damage, right? So if you go on anybody else with your Chrono, you get to Astral. So OD is the obvious target if it doesn't have Aegis, now you need to think twice. The alternative options were the Lone Druid, realistically. Um, he's extremely tanky if he gets True Form off, so he might not even need it. Dyer so, I, I do think OD is the best. I, I don't think you can generalize like that, that, oh, if Chorus behind you get it, uh-oh, Chorus dead. Mega dead. In vigilance. Send the message. Fortunately, for the secret, Zai is a very untiltable player, so I don't think sending a message like that has as much effect on him as other players. I, that's the difference, though. I'm just permanently tilted in real life, so you don't notice in game. It's just how I am. <laughs> Nothing tilts me more than kid invoker voice acting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're beating your record every day, so. Did you just say kid? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Pretty standard. Oh, they, they're gonna go for it. His Lotus. Lena cancelled the TP. Lena cancelled her, she has boots of travel. It's ready again in 30 seconds. Um, I do want to point out, by the way, I think it's worth mentioning. Look at the net worth distribution in this game. How uncommon is this? There's like two supports on the Dyer side that are super low net worth, and then there's four that are on par on Seeker. Like, all of them have found some decent farm, and then the three of the top four cores are easily VP. So while the gold is even, this distribution is extremely unusual in this patch. Oh, double chrono. Oh, they 
kill this bear. Oh. Oh. I almost trust you. That that is better than killing Lundred. Killing two bears is better than killing the hero. Or it's kind of I mean it's on par, I guess, right? It's six hundred gold. He loses farming potential. Uh, huge fight for VP there. Just a good two-man chrono, and you notice their target selection there, right? Like, in almost every situation there, you go on the OD. But who did Epic Kid go on? He killed the Nature's Prophet first. Because they know the OG, OD has Aegis, and if Puppy survives, he gets to counterplay with his mech and Meteor Hammer. So instead, they take him out fast, they set up this amazing tombstone, and Undying goes in. And then they easily get od twice, because guess what? Nietzsche has no items. He's not getting out of there. He doesn't have a Force Staff or some sort of Astral into Dagger. They can take him second. That was really, really well executed by VP. Dyer's top tower. Well, you can watch him right now trying to kill a dragon. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. He gave up. He lost. He lost to the dragon. No, he's he's stacking the camp. I'm kidding. He's coming back, but. It's gonna let it go over to Nisha and go and farm the other camp. Yeah, that's a really big loss for Secret. Uh, obviously, when we talk about this net worth distribution, I feel like it's worth focusing on a little bit more. Because obviously it means that when it comes to Secret, all of their heroes have more to bring to the table. But when you're on VP side, the heroes that you have that are poor have so high impact without gold. That's why it works so well for them. Undying does... In these kind of fights, some of the most out of any support in this patch by just casting his ult, Tombstone, running in and hitting someone with this incredible slow and damage amp. And the other hero is tiny. Get your spell combo off, you've done your job, you reset, go back out and do it again. A dagger... I wouldn't say it's luxury, but they have... With the tools that they have, it feels unnecessary. Because Secret don't have mobility items except a dagger on Slardar, you're gonna find a way to get some sort of Avatos on OD, Nature's Prophet, or the... Um, or the lone druid, so if you find that, you're good to go. Lina has a Yules, Void has a Chrono, so there's other ways of initiating fights that we've seen both of them come to fruition, so. Tiny Dagger, speaking of the devil, he's 20 gold away, he's gonna die. Oh, that's so sad. That is so sad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one of the wonderful things about Dota that really separates it from real life is that you still make money while you're dead. So he will come back to life. Also, you come back to life. You don't usually do that in real life. Very few people are known to have done that. Uh, none of them confirmed, actually. Um, Dagger's coming up now. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say he was a reincarnation or something. <laughs> Look out for fallen rocks! So Dagger Online, time to smoke, I think. Bloodstone, insane item timing here. You just combine the perfect timing, Bloodstone Dagger plus Void Chrono, and you smoke up as four and you make the move. This is textbook stuff uh, from Virtus Pro. See if they can find a play here. It's not hard for them to predict where Secret's heroes are based on the, the ward that they have in the bottom jungle and the heroes that showed mid. And they're gonna find the Crown Jewel here. If, yeah. Puppy. Dyer's top tower is under attack. <laughs> yeah, like you said last time, don't know if it was needed, but you know, maybe Puppy is more tiltable than Zai. <laughs> we have proof of that. Um, so, Radiant's top tower is yeah. under attack. I mean, one of the things about Laguna, um, it's a relatively low cooldown, and you can Radiant's say that looks like a waste, but honestly, top. if the kill is 5 or 10 seconds faster, and you don't think you're going to use it in the near future, just throw it out there. He's full mana anyway. Mana's not a, a concern when you have these items on Lina, so save yourself the time, Radiant's get more map pressure in, push up the lanes that bit quicker. Now that maybe you're going to... Oh, his eyes in. That was... Still have Chrono. <laughs> it's 
secret. Can't outrun a wild. Secret of getting rolled, man. There's no need to sugarcoat it. They're just getting outplayed in these moves. It's really just awesome play from VP so far today. Yes. Love their drafting as well. Looks like we're going to find a little bit of a catch here on save. So something going the way of secret. <laughs> TP will be cancelled. Uh, but this is a Roshan you kind of can't afford to lose. Your lineup very much depends on this. You have picked the Sardar, you have a lone droid. Uh, you want to control this area of the map and get this Roshan every single time, especially as Radiant. And now you're going to lose this over to more than likely the Faceless World. You could even give it to Lina if you wanted to. I think they will put it on Edla to kip. And he will not feel super confident going in. There's a cheese on this one as well. This is a mega tanky Lina, by the way. You have Bloodstone and Cheese. Cutting through this is, is not easy. If she gets one armor item or some sort of other defensive item at this point, it might not even be needed. Um, times are tough for, uh, for Secret in this game, for sure. Yeah. I think it's definitely a big part of their drafting today as well. Uh, I really like the way their teamfight execution looks. They're getting a shitload of value out of them dying as well. I think you were more excited about that than GPK was. From the night. He's probably like nice guys. Radiant's middle oh. tower is under attack. GG. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Virtus Bone. Victory. I mean, what is there to say, really? Obviously, a lot of people will be criticizing Secret for this series. I think they tried something creative in both drafts. Uh, VP were super stable, and they just played awesome. Uh, to me, this was more of a VP win than a Secret loss, so to speak. Um, 